So I finally received a functioning Ambernic RG405, and I have to say that I really like it. As many of you know, the first model I received had an issue with the motherboard where it would not allow certain buttons or thumbsticks to work. So I got it replaced and here it is, currently crushing my expectations in some aspects. There's a lot to move with this device as it has that beautiful metal build that I really love and that pretty much only Ambernick cares to implement along with the horsepower to back up its price tag to an extent. So introducing the Ambernick RG405, let's dive right in. The exterior design consists of metal for the entirety of the build. This is a beautiful design and I am very glad that I went with this colorway, but this is a very solid device to hold in hand and it has such a fantastic build that is very difficult to rival considering the craftsmanship here. I always appreciate Ambernex metal devices the most. On the front, you're going to find your face buttons with some additional navigation buttons for Android. On the top, you're going to find your shoulder buttons, a cooling vent, a USB-C port, a volume rocker, and a sleep-wake button. On the bottom, you will find some stereo speakers, a headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. On the back, you're going to find some rubber grips for this device. So the buttons on the front are honestly really good probably best in class. Seriously, they have a glossy feeling to them, but they feel incredible to press. You've also got a really solid and proper D-pad to play with, which is really important for a retro device. Then you have those awesome Hall Sensing sticks, which is a very welcome trend in today's market. The triggers feel super clicky and super solid to press. I really like these, and as a matter of fact, I really can't give the buttons more praise. I mean, the navigation buttons are perfectly positioned and styled, and the volume rocker is easy to reach and distinguish from pretty much everything else. It's really good. I have nothing but praise when it comes to the exterior design and the build of the Ambernick RG405. This device features a 4-inch 640x480 IPS display that looks quite nice. It's pretty colorful, not super bright by any means, but quite colorful. My only regret about it is that it is a 4x3 screen instead of a 16x9, which is normally my preference when it comes to these things, but this is a pretty good screen that I can't really find much to hate on. Sure, it is going to be a little bit dim in terms of what it can accomplish brightness-wise, but it does anything else so well already, so this is honestly a really good screen as is. This device features a set of stereo speakers that sounds pretty decent. They're mostly fine, so I don't have much to complain about. Now, normally this is when I would show you a speaker test, but I wasn't able to record one because I'm in the garage, and unfortunately my neighbors were blasting music, so I just couldn't record it sound test, sorry. This device features a Unisoc Tiger T618 CPU, Mali G52 GPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, which is expandable, and a 4500 milliamp hour battery. The specs are definitely what you should expect from current gen retro handouts like this, so let's go ahead and take a look at the software, and then we will talk about the gaming performance with some emulators. Here we've got Android 12, which is nice to see. It's a modern interface, but on these devices, it will be super bare bones. You do get the option that of directly installing emulators when you first boot up this device, but I like it. I want to see more Android handhelds as they offer better performance and greater versatility. My point being is that the software is more than sufficient for my needs and honestly, I'm just ready to move on to the game performance. So first we've got N64 performance through the M64 Plus FZ emulator. I played some Super Mario 64 and its performance was as expected. It was absolutely beautiful. It looked very sharp and very good, so I have no complaints about the performance. Any and all N64 games should run this well, so I wouldn't really worry about whether or not other games are just as accessible, because they definitely are. This device is more than powerful enough to support N64 to its fullest, and even do some upscaling if you want to. Good stuff here for N64. PlayStation 1 through the Duck Station emulator also ran just as beautifully. I played Valkyrie Profile because I am obsessed with the visuals of this game, and I have to say that with great upscaling, you should be able to make this game look even better, while still getting very good performance without hiccups. The same will really apply for every PlayStation 1 game, I'm sure, but I was only able to test a handful, so keep that in mind. Either way, I think that with this one, they still nailed the performance aspect hands down. Amazing visuals, amazing performance, and it all just runs very smoothly on this RG405. 
5. Now let's go ahead and talk about the more difficult to run systems. Next is PSP through the PPSSPP emulator. I played God of War and I have to say that 2x is really as far as I'm willing to push this game in particular, but overall it does run fairly well here. I could play God of War pretty effectively at 2x with some stutters here and there, but I think that's fine for the experience that you get. Obviously, other devices like the Ion Odin will offer stronger performance and great upscaling capabilities, but this still offers a really fun experience for PSP emulation and even God of War one of the harder games to emulate. So this game is one of the toughest to emulate, so I'd say that almost every other game should run alright at 2x resolution as well. Now let's get into PlayStation 2 performance through the Ether SX2 emulator. It's not amazing. I ran Kingdom Hearts 2 through this emulator and I have to say that I was kind of disappointed because the performance is very inconsistent at 1x resolution and on the Vulcan backend. Things actually slowed down quite a bit, and this is more than just a little bit. It genuinely did not feel like it was very playable with something that is, generally speaking, this easy to run. At least the beginning portions of Kingdom Hearts 2 are not very demanding at all. So seeing this was surprising and rather disappointing. GameCube was similarly disappointing here. On something like the MMJR2 emulator, running on the Vulcan backend, Twilight Princess suffered from a lot of pop-in. This wasn't just with textures, but it happened frequently enough with actual assets within a given scene. But technically, besides that, the game did run relatively smoothly. But what is the point of playing like this? It's far from pleasant. This seems to be very specific to the default settings for the Dolphin MMJR2 emulator, and it's certainly a common enough occurrence to be an annoyance to me. Sonic Colors on the same emulator did give slightly better results. This was through Wii emulation, but Sonic would sometimes disappear entirely, and there was certainly lag on this front too. It's such a shame that the performance is like this because when I hold this device, it just feels like it would be absolutely perfect for something like Wii, GameCube, and PlayStation 2. But the performance is just subpar. I have to say that we need a more solid solution for these emulators. We do have the Odin, but it only goes up in price from there. So let's see a more affordable solution come about, eh? Battery life on this device is not the best. You can easily get this down to 3 hours with enough usage. So this device is pretty easy to kill. Kind of average for something like this, but still worth noting. So in conclusion, this is the handheld I never knew I wanted. It's so small, the buttons are so great, the analog sticks too, as well as the build. All of these are just amazing things about this device. But for most of the games I would want a portable emulator for, I can't say that this is a great deal. You're mostly paying for the build, as the performance does leave enough to be desired. I really like this device, but it needs to be more powerful. At least powerful enough to offer decent PlayStation 2 performance at 1x resolution. Solution. That's literally all I asked for. It nailed everything else, so let's see an upgraded version. I don't recommend it if you're looking for power, but definitely if you're looking for style and even convenience. And that has been my verdict when it comes to the RG405. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do very much appreciate it, and I hope that this video was helpful to you. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have any, uh, and uh, if you disagree with me on anything that I said regarding the RG405, or if maybe there's anything that I could do to improve my own experience. Also, please keep in mind that you can find me on Twitch where... Uh, from here on out, I will be streaming more often. Uh, forgive me, grad school literally just ended, so I am getting back into the groove of things. And also, you can find me on Instagram, where I do post every now and then, but links to everything down below. So with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Oh, and affiliate links down below. Of course, you will find affiliate links down below to this device, to Ambernick's website. If you are interested, please use that. It helps out the channel. But anyway, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Enjoy.